recording. All right, welcome everyone to Tableau Live. This is Boulder Insights, uh, August Tableau Live session where we have real problems from real, real users solved uh, during this call. Um, and I'm Heather Detillo. I'll be your uh, your host um, today and facilitator of the of the call and uh, chiming in with some of my thoughts for questions and answers. Um, I am the um, VP of operations here at Boulder Insight and a certified trainer and consultant um, with Tableau and uh, our, our GGTK, our good guy to know, the guy that will be answering your questions is um, Chris Cox, our very own Chris Cox, who is our founder, principal and GGTK of the company. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into what we are planning to do today with y'all. Um, we will, uh, this is our agenda. We'll be um, doing a quick welcome. We'll be reviewing submitted questions. And we do have um, five questions today that we should be able to get to all of those um, today during the call. Um, and then we'll also have an open Q&A session um, uh, for anyone that has additional questions that might not have been answered during the call. And then a quick wrap up. So this is a hands-on participatory thing, um, the, these Tableau Live sessions. And these actually came about, we started doing them as a way to um, stay connected to our clients that may no longer uh, be active clients with us, but ones that we've loved working with in the past, um, people uh, in the Tableau community at large who um, during the pandemic, we were just trying to find ways to keep connected and to be a support to people that were out there in that time of change. And it became so popular that we've decided to keep on doing that. That. Um, so um, we are a Tableau um, uh, Tableau partner for over 15 years. We do more than just Tableau. We're really about business um, strategies and, and development. Uh, we're layering in machine learning and AI more and more as well. And we'd love to be able to support you in any way we can um, beyond these Tableau live sessions. But we're so glad that you are here. Um, is, so I want to learn a little bit about you all. So if is this your first Tableau Live session? Um, oops, let me go back there. If it is, um, you go ahead and put in the chat um, that it's yes. If it's your first Tableau Live session, let us know how you heard about us. If it's not, we're glad you're here again. What keeps you coming back? So um, if it's your first Tableau Live session, go ahead and enter that into chat of how you found us this week. Uh, this month. And um, if you're here for a second time, why do you keep coming back? What's the benefit? So other folks can know that as well. And then the other question we have is how long have you been using Tableau? So feel free to go ahead and put that in the chat now. Um, if it's your first session or not, how you found us and how long you've been using Tableau. We've got a few people coming back. They've been using Tableau for uh, over for nearly two years, but sporadically. And so this helps with their learning. We're seeing people um, really learning how to use Tableau more effectively. Um, and Tableau Live is always teaching them something new. That's great. Not my first session. Want to hear the updates. Not my first time. Love the problem solving. Awesome. Thanks, guys. It's great to hear. So yeah, it's still very new, but really enjoying learning. So we're so glad that you all are here with us. Thank you for coming back. Chris has to be here. Um, and that is why. Um, so uh, and we've got another first timer here. Um, interested to see what others are asking. That's great. All right. Welcome, everybody. So let's go ahead and keep on moving along here. Um, so some of the submitted questions, ah, not my first time to took a CERT course with me. Hi, Tom. Uh, keep finding things I don't know how to do in Tableau and been using Tableau off and on for about five to six years when not using uh, Power BI. Yeah. So, so good to know. Tom, we're so glad that you came back and I'm so glad you found us through one of the, one of the classes that I taught. I, it's, uh, I miss teaching. I haven't been teaching as much as well. Um, and all right, thanks so much. Great to hear from everybody. So here are some of our submitted questions. And Tom, I know you were one of the first uh, questions that were submitted. So why don't we go ahead and start with this one um, and just want to make sure we're understanding the question as well. So uh, Tom um, had reached out beforehand with the registration. You can put in a question now um, where he said he has a request to separate dashboards and worksheets when publishing the Tableau server. So Chris, I am actually going to stop sharing my screen here and allow you to take over. Um, 
and I will change my view to speaker view here. So Tom, thanks for th 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 thanks for giving me an easy one to start with. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so when you, when you, when you when you publish the Tableau server, like if I had had these dashboards, what you'll see is um, when I go to publish, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna ask me what 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 I, what I want what I want to put 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 up there. It's only gonna have the things listed that I that I have in my in my view down here. But if I if I cancel this. And let's say I have all these sheets on this one. If I unhide all those sheets, and then now they're now they're now they're actually available. When I go back to publish, then it's going to publish everything. So now you can see it's it's all of these sheets. So that's so so, so that's really all it all it is. It's it's whatever's actually visible down here from the bottom. You, you can actually publish, and 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 uh, and so technically they all get published every time. But it's only, but this the, this just makes like URLs for, for each. So if I was to publish this now, then you would see that <clears throat> jump to a different screen. Let me just do this. There we go. And let's see here. There's publishing really quick. And you'll see that th these are all set up. Um, so so if, once I show you this, does that does that does that, does that answer your question? Not exactly. I'm sorry. Put them all in the same folder. Yeah. So they would all go in here. So I, I just published this. I just published this this uh, this like project, and then it's all here. So this is the dashboard dashboard, and then these are actually views. Yep. Yep. I'm trying. But what I'm saying is, how do I split the dashboards up into one folder, the worksheets into another folder? Oh. Um, well, um, you, I guess you, I guess you have to publish it twice, or you could do this. You could say, you know, um, so here I'm just in one actually folder right now, but if you wanted to, you could, um, you, you, you I think you think you have to publish them twice to, to be able to do that. Um, because you're, you're only going to have, have like URLs of one, but I guess, I guess I'm kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of curious though. Well, what's the point of the point of the of the of the of like 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 having all the views, but by them but by them yourselves? Are you doing that to, to size them bigger or something like that, or what? What are you 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 trying 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 to do with that? So I have five dashboards that's created from thirty one sheets, and yep. so in the same folder, it gets cumbersome, and some of the dashboards are tracking from the dashboard to certain worksheets, right. That's why I'm trying to split them up. But but I guess I guess I guess the I guess the point is is that if you just if you just hide all sheets, you know, and then just publish it like this, you don't need the sheets. So you just 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 actually hide them all, um, and then you just publish this, and this is ju just your actually dashboards. And you can even click actually dashboards only if you wanted to. Correct. You don't even have to hide. Don't tell me from a dashboard to a worksheet. It doesn't work. What do you mean it doesn't work? It doesn't navigate from the dashboard to the worksheet when you hide it like that. But you're not trying to go. Okay, I, I guess I'm not understanding. You're trying to go from. You're trying to click on. Uh, I guess you go to the one that actually has something on it. Um, mm -hmm. So tell me. I don't understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to click this worksheet and go to this sheet. So if I had a subcategory like you're showing up in my top right corner, I have an icon for an Excel that's a spreadsheet that they can click on that goes to that worksheet that's just basically a cross tab of everything that's in that subcategory dashboard. You can, yeah, so, you know, well, there's a couple so ways to do that. You can already do that from here, right? You can, you can, you can do so, several different things. So let me, let me show you a couple of different things then. So let's just do this. I'm gonna, un, I'm gonna unhide these views. So I have something, something, something to work with. Okay. So if I was to take that sub, sub, sub uh, category sheet, I'm just going to throw it on this one. Actually, I'm going to use it on the uh, light version because it's already built that way. Um, so let's put it on here. Okay. So a couple, couple, couple different options you could uh, do. Instead of going to the different sheet, you could say, okay, I want to, I, I want to actually duplicate this one as like a cross tab, right? So I want to duplicate as a cross cross tab. So this is what you're wanting wanting to dr 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 drill down to, right? So this one here. Not that that one looks great, but that's what it what it is. So um, so one thing you can do 
is I can go back to here and I can even put this inside of, inside of the whole, 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 whole uh, tool tip if I, if I wanted to. I could put in here that I want to add in that, that sheet. That way, when they hover over anything, so uh, what do I call it? It's cross tab. Yeah. So now, if you hover over, you're going to get those get those numbers, right? Yeah. You that. That's 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 one option. The other option is I could say, okay, I want to um, I want to add a uh, I want to add this to the to the table. Yeah. I'm adding in these pieces here. So this is your cross tab that, that that actually exists, and then I could just say, I want to uh, you know add a um, <clears throat> uh, they don't do it on this one yet. So I'll do it like this. I would do, um, let me go to, I'll add a container first, because you can do it on that. Put this inside the container and say this shows up here, or maybe it shows up on top of this thing. It does, doesn't matter. You could put it even here, even. And let's make this, I'm going to make it fit entire view. I don't know, it's not how, how we need it, but. Um, and uh, well, let's see the height. That's going to be pretty small, but you, you, you can understand what we're trying to do. Yep. And then I would just take the container and we'll just make it, um, for right now, we'll just make it white just so you don't have to see behind it. And so now what I would do is I would take the container and I would add a show, show actually hide button. So that would go up here, here, here somewhere. So that way you can do the exact same thing you're doing, except going to another sheet, you just actually show it right here. Okay. Yeah, because if they're because if they're because if they're trying to get to the raw numbers, and there, there's I mean I mean there's no 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 extra reason to have them go to a different sheet, but but you but you but you but you can you can also do this, is that um, yeah I can see what you're saying because you don't want to see the different um, you don't see the different URLs, um, but yeah because you're because you're launching them outside of that same tab in their their, their browser. Right, you're going to another another tab. Yep. What you're doing? I'm creating an easy button for C level executives that don't know how to use Tableau, and they want to be seen to biz. Yeah. So yep. I, I think I mean, this would be easier because now you're not going to launch them outside of that 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 like view because because yours is going to open up a new new like a tab tab in the browser, right? Right. Yeah. So I think that's harder because that now they have to know to go back to a different tab. Because you're not going to be able to put putty navigation on 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 that whole whole uh, worksheet, you know. Oh, trust me, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things. Um, I don't know if I can show you. How do you open the I... TL light? What is the TL dark? How do you open this? Is it something you designed, or it's, it's yeah, we it? yeah, this is something that we 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 designed. So this is just kind of kind of a background. We have um we we actually put these out there um if you go to uh tableau uh um to tableau uh, to, to, to templates.com like uh, we have um so for example if you wanted so if you wanted a version of this here's here's one here's one background and then we have like have, have like di different different collections oh, have, like the KPI bars and you know and title bars so what, what, whatever you want so there's a bunch of different versions of it. Gotcha. So, one for that. Here's one for, here's here's one 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 one, uh, uh, so one, one for, for for you know for certain colleges or whatever we we we, we kind of work with. Yeah, yeah. So gotcha. Yeah. Great so question, uh, we, yeah. What we what we definitely find is is um is actually is you know is actually building the views in Tableau is easy, but making it look good is what's hard. And it so, is. And so what we found is. Is just is just you know using using our like you you out you out UX team to kind of build these backgrounds that give your eye spots to go you know give you give these corners that are actually rounded that look look good it's, it's, the thing is not really you know so square and block and, and kind of boxy but yeah this is just different ones that we've done so it's kind of a dark dark mode version versus like a light mode version that's it but. Yeah, I was going to show, I don't think I have it open still. Um, I think I can show this. Let me open up this because um, it's not going to have any data on it. I'm going to show one 
nav thing that you can do. So instead of, um, and actually you don't even have to have sheets as tab, tabs anymore. Um, you can do this, which this actually, actually let, me, let me actually try something really, really, really quick. Um, so, so uh, Tom, your, your, yours, yours is actually linking out to a different sheet. Yep. Yeah. Um, if you do this, let me just show you something different. Um, if I was to put in some sort of like, some sort of some sort of like navigation, but not have it go 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 to a worksheet, have it go go to a dashboard, and I could have the dashboard have in my cross tab would be the only thing on it, right? So <clears throat> now that I have that, I could now say, um, I could now say uh, off of we'll just do it off this guy here. It doesn't matter. I could add in like a, a like like this this whole in the navigation button. And I can want it to navigate to um, uh, edit button. Go to the cross tab dashboard. What I call it, just dashboard four. Um, name of anything, um, and then go to cross tab. So the great thing about this is um, that'll that'll happen here. But now on this on, on this actually dashboard, I can now add the, add the same thing to go go actually back. So, because I think if you're going to a worksheet, you're not going to be able to add in this. This, this, this like navigation. Mm -hmm. So, I, I would I would want to be able to go back to the to the main to the main one if I wanted to. So, I want to go back to uh, TL light light mode, right? Um, go back to home. Right. I think this is a much better solution, Chris, um, and and uh, to, to be able to to have the the cross tab accessible from the workbook that you have, Tom, I think is ideal. Um, but you don't have the option to have navigation buttons back and forth so they can get back to the dashboard unless it's in a dashboard. Um, so that's what Chris is just doing now is the navigation. So so in this way, I'm just going to publish one, and I, and I'm not going to show sheets as tabs. So I'm just publishing that one that one TL light mode. That's the only one that I that I publish. And then now you'll see that it stays inside of the same. So when I only have one actually link to go to, but now I have the ability to go do a cross tab. I guess I don't. Why don't I have that? Not that. You don't have permission. Well, I do have permission. It's not right. Why do we me? Maybe it is the publishing. No. We do this all, all the all the time. Yeah, we we do buttons all the time. So I'm not sure, Chris, if uh, I missed up something. Let's check if that caused. Yeah, that's maybe. Oh, I, I know. I know what it, what it, what it, what it is. It's uh, this. I I you, when you published, you uncheck something. I think. And, yeah. Um, there you go. There we go. I think that's it. All right. For those of you just joining us, I know a few people. Uh, came in just a little bit past the, the start time. So we're answering our first question um, that came in uh, from Tom is um, he has a request to separate dashboards and worksheets when publishing to Tableau server. And really what the what the, the issue is, is that um, there's folks um, that they want to be able to see the dashboard, but then they also want to go to a cross tab and see that data um, and things. So we're talking about alternate uh, ways to be able to do that in server. So we'll see uh, how that goes with Chris. Um, and then Chris, we do have a question um, from Ellie that was submitted beforehand and she's here now. Um, so that's where we're going to hop to next. Um, and I know we've had a couple other folks uh, come in. And so what we're doing right now is answering the submitted questions that, that came through. Um, and uh, we're happy to take any questions from those live participants as well. If you have a question, just put it right into the, the chat and Zoom, and we'll be sure to get to that today. Um, we always prioritize the people that are here with us um, first um, as well to make sure we answer your questions and we can stay on a little longer and record answers to the other questions that um, were submitted this month or carry them over to next. So um, let's see how that's gonna work for you, Chris. Yeah, didn't Do you want I, to test out that button? I thought it was supposed to. I is it working? Um, is it working right now just within here, the worksheet local. itself? Yeah, it definitely it works here. Locally. So that yeah, it that should. We build these out all the time. I know. I don't um, know why. Something wrong with my like search well, server 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 permissions, I think. But yeah, okay, that's that, we'll definitely do it. Well, let's let's show them one example before we move on to the next question. Um, just of how this works and it's embedded. Um, here, Chris, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Um, 
We, uh, this is a, one of our public facing projects um, that we work with uh, a Colorado Health Foundation um, and we can take a look at results and you'll see this, um, we'll take a look at last year's, next year's, uh, this year's is getting uh, published in just a couple weeks. Um, but these are ways that we can have buttons that are built into things. So let me just go into challenges facing Colorado and Tom, I think this, this would work. Um, it's a little different that we're not taking into a cross tab, but these are just those navigation buttons. This is a navigation button that would take you back to home. So you could take that, that navigation that Chris showed you to be able to do that, that and it would take you back to the homepage um, or back to a dashboard if you'd like to. And then, you know, you have other buttons even here to get you to other ones. So this is all using navigation within the same dashboard, but building this more like a website and an experience that people are used to. Um, this is also a way to navigate within this dashboard to the second housing um, dashboard. So we're on one. If I click on this, that's again, one of those navigation buttons. Chris did a text one um, rather than an image, but you could easily do an image um, as well. Um, and that takes you to dashboard two. So they could filter, go to another dashboard and it could have just the cross tab dashboard um, that would have that information and then get back to one or get back to home. So that we do these navigation buttons all the time um, in our work. So I'm sorry that that's the beauty of doing a live demo. Sometimes those things just don't show up the way that you expect. Um, so let me go ahead and get to our next set of questions. Um, actually, I'm gonna put that right into the chat for everybody to see. We have a question from Ellie on how to sort uh, based on multiple variables. Um, and I will actually pull this back up. I'll pull up that question here, Chris, so you can see that as well. Um, so here's our second question from the slideshow from Ellie, um, how to sort based on multiple variables. So Chris, I'll hand this over to you. And Ellie, if you have any explanation that you'd like to share in addition to um, what you're trying to do that can sometimes help Chris try to solve this slide. Yeah, um, thank you very much. First of all, this is really great. Um, I have a question because I was trying to sort, like I have, let's say one, two, three columns. Like for example, you have appliances, you have blinders, and then you have bookcases. Like for example, column one, two, three. Um, I want the person to, so those are savings for me. So I want, the, but then they have different bases. So I want the person to be able to go in um, and basically click on it and say, okay, I want to sort based on appliances. Or no, I want to sort based on um, I can share. I have uh, something open. Well, yeah, sure, I can that would be share, great. Share an example. I've already got an example for you. So okay. um, I have this one that we just uh, did. Um, <clears throat> so this one. And I'm, I'm By the way, um, your pictures are so beautiful. I mean, oh, mine are just so blunt. <laughs> so here. Um, so is we will a, help you with that, with Tableau yeah, templates. Yeah, I'm happy with that for sure. So, um, so in this one, I wanted to be able to sort. It doesn't say sort here, but I can sort by the by, by the yield rates. Uh huh. So sort by these 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 rates here, right? Oh yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. So how you, how you do that? Let me open up. Let me have that one open. No, I don't have that one open. Let me go grab it. So file open. Um, something we do quite often as well. This is in. Yeah, nope. Nope. It's not there. It's here. Central clients. I think I saved it inside the Jackson State. There we go. Okay. Let me get this open, and I'll show you how I how I did that. Where's it at? Hasn't opened yet. Why not? Let's try it again. There it goes. Okay, so one 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 thing I one thing I hate is um is like is, is like 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 if you have a bunch of graphs that are built off the same thing, I don't want to have to sort them all. I want one button to sort the whole group, um, but but I want to be able to change those. So what I what I did in this one is I made um so I, so <laughs> that's a parameter. So I just created this okay. up. It was called sort. Right. Uh -huh. So in this one, jump there it is. So I have two different values. I sort on yield or or uh, sort on yield or emissions. 
Okay. And so then what do I, what I do is I go and make a, um, a sort, a, a, a sort calc, calc that says, hey, when my parameter equals yield, then I want to sort on yield rate. Else I want to sort on like that rate. And that's and that's that's and that's and that's that's basically it. And I I just did it times 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 negative one. I was probably just lazy, but I just did it so it was like reversed. Um, but now I go to any of these graphs, and then I just add that to my sort. So now I just um, so I just put that as my sort function. So I'm sorting my field. This is sort two, which is the same thing, just just a little bit a little bit different, right? So it's the same thing. But I just sort that field based on what, 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 whatever they they actually chose. So in this one, if they chose chose emissions, these numbers aren't different. That's why it's not a great graph. Let me get you a better one. It actually shows you that it works. So this is the. Uh, let me do this format just so you can see the backgrounds and stuff. Um, there we go. So yeah, so I just have my. So this is written off your um, sort button. So if I sort by, by, by the emissions rate, it goes that way. I sort by yield rate, it goes this way. So how do you put that sort thing there? Is that by filter? No, it's a, so it's this, this whole, 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 whole parameter. So if I, so I just added, added this, 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 so if I click on this and you go here and you get down to parameters, then you just add it. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. You can add a parameter in there. And then when you define a parameter, uh, how does it know it's a sort parameter? It doesn't, it doesn't right? It doesn't. It's, it's just a so, so it's just a um, yeah. So so whenever whenever you build build these 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 parameters, uh -huh. you know, you pick pick what you want. You can call call, call it call it call, call anything you want to. Anything yeah. random. Anything. And then you know I just make it either an integer or a string, and I have I have a list. So I want it to sort on one or sort on two, right? I can do anything. Those are again random. Yeah. So then once I have these, then I go and create a new one, very quickly, like a calculated field. And then I would just use that. I don't know what I called it. Let's take this out. Find it. So I call that this. So th that's my new, new like parameter. So I say if, if like anything equals, you know, uh, sort one. Then I want it to, to 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 give me some some value that could be, let's say that's you know that could be uh, oh okay could be, could be could be anything thing I think I want it could be uh, yeah know, yield rate yeah yield 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 rate you know and then, then yield rate uh, yeah and then what happens to yield rate how does it know it should sort it. Because oh, then you go and you find the sort function over there. Yeah. So here, let me let me let me do this. I'll, I'll show you something better. So let me show you like this. So if I was to pull that sort um, sort function on here, so all it's doing is this. Is like if I pulled it here, so you could see it, and I'll make it discrete. So all it's doing is putting in these actually numbers, right? So right now, sort actually it's not sort two, it's sort one. Sorry, wrong one. Discrete. So all it's doing is saying, okay, I'm now sorting on negative 0.25, negative 0.23, negative 20. But if I change what it is, which th that th that's these numbers over here, right? Uh -huh. And if I want to do this way, it's going to sort, it's going to change what this value is. I change to emissions. Now sort value changes. It changes to 1.85, 0.84, 857, 8855. That's because you went to term and you changed the sort function in there, right? Yep. So, so I just have the term sort on this on on this field. So this is a field I named sort. Maybe Chris, let's do one um, just from from start uh, okay, to finish. I think that might be really helpful. Um, All right, let's do that. So. So let's go back to so here. If those fields are not calculated fields, that's fine, right? If they're discrete and dimension. Yeah, let's get you. Let's get you a good one. Um, here, I'll, I'll just make some new things really quick here. I'm gonna hide all these. I think even the the dashboard you were in, Chris, was fine. Well, I don't have all the same stuff, and and they they don't have all the same examples. So I'll just do this one really quick. Okay. So let's just say I have um, product. Um, Mm, let's do something small. Okay. Product 
and that's too too small. Let's do sub sub category, and let's say uh, we have we have sales 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 and profit. Okay, so we have sales, and we have profit. Okay, <clears throat> so if I wanted, so I could obviously sort down here, which I, I don't want to do, right? So I'm just going to hide hide those. I'm going to color these guys. I'll make profit will be orange, and that's fine. Just so we see. It. Okay, so how you do this is you say I want to create create, create a new, new new parameter, and I'm just going to call it sort sales profit. Yeah, I'll just whatever, and then I could I could I, I could make make it a string. I could make it an integer. Let's do it this way this time. So I say I want a list. So a value of one equals this is going to be it's going to display it as sales. A value of two is going to display it as profit. Okay. So now now I have 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 that. So now I want to create and now now there's a cal calculated field. And I want to call it sort, you know, sales profit, fine. And I want to say if um, sort sales profit, and it's and it's now purple because it's that 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 that, 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 that parameter. If that equals one, then sales. Else, and I, I can do it like this. Else, if sort sales profit equals two, um, then um, profit. Yeah, profit. Got it. Right. So that's basically it. So now I just add that. And here I'll, I'll go ahead and show this on this screen. I'll show the parameter. Uh, we'll do a single value. And then I'll just have this field sorted on that. So I'm going to sort that field by a field of descending value and Let's pick it, so sort profit, done. So now if I change this to profit, it's gonna sort like that way. Wow, so pretty those, slick. It's very nice. So those green ones on top, if they are in blue and down there, it doesn't matter, right? If they're blue and down there, what do you mean? Like if, every, oh. if all of the um, if the, all of the items you have are, are discrete and they're all dimension, it doesn't matter, right? Should matter. It's yeah, exactly. It's, oh, okay. Oh my gosh, this is lifesaver. <laughs> that is beautiful. And then you could even add like a third one in. Um, you could do. Um, this is where we'd have to do a little bit more. Let me think for a second. I think if I could do uh, edit, you could I do. I think you'll have to. Three is shipping costs you could do. Oh, alphabetical. I see what you're doing there, Chris. I like what you're putting down. So now I could change my um, calculation. Yeah. This is where I don't know if it'll work. We'll find. We'll just do um, else. And here I would just drag in your thing that you're using. Right. It's probably going to break. That's okay. So I'll just do um, make this a string. And it still should work because it's going to be, um, doesn't matter if it's a number or not, it'll still work. Uh, I didn't like it. Maybe if I pull it back off and back on. Oh, I didn't like that. Oh, I didn't pick a thing. Um, there we go. So let's see. That still works. Oh, I'm going, going the wrong, wrong direction. Sorry. Yeah, so that way I'd have to, so that, so because I chose, all right, here, here we go. So because I chose, ch chose actually descending, so I have to do it this way for that one to work. So now it's, now that's correct, but that's, this is the opposite order you want to go for this one. So this is where I would go in here and I would do the minus one. Oops, yep. Times negative one, right? Times negative one. So that way they'll all be right. So now, now profit's going to sort in order. It's hard, hard for me to see with the, just the X values. I'm going to put it back to these things. I can't see as good. Um, continuous. Not very nice. Continuous. There we go. All right. So now I should be able to see. Those are not sorting how I would expect them to sort. 
So I'd have to figure that out. But anyway, there's there's, there's definitely- No, that's, that's more than enough for me. That's great. Yeah. There's definitely mm -hmm. a way to get it right. You just have to know what those, 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 those like numbers are. So I have to see it. So now that makes sense. Let's see what we're getting here. Okay. Oh, we're getting it by all the pieces. Okay. So, yeah. So I'd have to do, um, I have to make this be a um, sum up or do a fixed, uh, or maybe just a sum of sales. Let's try this first. Now we're going deep. Every um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Chris is doing this for those of you. Um, uh, um, on, on the call um, who maybe not built parameters before. I put the steps in the chat, the four steps for creating parameters. Chris is going deep into a more complex parameter right now. Um, and the first step is to create it. You create the parameter by right-clicking in the, the data pane um, and uh, creating a parameter. It'll say create parameter. Um, then you need to show it, um, which Chris has done in the top right corner. So that can be used. Uh, then you want to make sure to tie it. So you remember he created the parameter, but then he created a calculated field. Um, typically, you're going to tie it with a calculated field. Sometimes you can do that through the filters um, as well. And then the last step is to make sure you use it um, in the view, and then your parameters will work. So Chris has shown some really great examples of that. So Chris, before we go too deep into fixing this, I'd love to bring up another question um, yeah. that we have um, that has come through today. So let me pull up our third question today. Um, and I'm just checking to make sure anybody uh, live on the call as well that may have another question, uh, you know, feel free to come off mute, put it in the chat, and we'll make sure to prioritize that next. Um, the next uh, question, Chris, was um, one from, uh, from, let's see, from Eric um, that was asking um, that he has a row level calc um, with categories and subcategories, but it has them stumped. But I don't know if you have enough information to answer that question um, from, from him. So if not, I thought, was hoping Eric would be here. Uh, Eric comes often. He's one of my former students from Minnesota, I believe is where Eric still is, um, and uh, had that question. So I don't know that we are able to answer that real level calc um, with categories and subcategories without knowing what has him stumped. Um, well, this, we got a pretty good example here because I'm I'm getting I'm getting an issue anyway with this one. So I'm assuming he's talking about like a level 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 level, level of detail calculation. That was my thought that he'd be coming in with a level of detail question um, yeah. uh, today. If not, I do have uh, another question that can move up with the queue. Um, and one question that did come in, um, Ellie, we are not a Tableau uh, we're, we're not a Tableau company per se. We're our own company, but we are a partner with um, different organizations in Tableau being the longest standing partner that we've been a partner with. Um, so we've been doing this Tableau thing for about 15 plus years now. So there's very few problems we haven't seen um, that uh, we'd love to be able to educate and empower um, uh, the people that work with us to be able to do a lot of this on their own and come to us with their harder questions so we can keep helping you level up your skills. But we are our own company, um, but we're a, a Tableau partner um, uh, in um, sales. Uh, we're a Tableau partner with services and um, with uh, training and all the things as well. So we have a couple different partnerships with them. Can you give us uh, your email or somebody, I mean, whoever is the point of contact? So that Absolutely. We, we will be happy to do that. Um, there we go. All right, I got it. I got it to work. So okay, to, let's um, see that work, Chris, and then we'll move on to another question too. So I, I just end up putting it in the in the view, but this does it as well. So since we're going with a string, so instead of just doing it on the sort menu, I think that works great for um. So so the sort menu doesn't know what to do with with this be, be, being a being old string, so that really doesn't doesn't do anything for you. So what you have to do is since I turned it into a string to be able to get this other value, this alphabetical, then I just I just actually added that to the to to the view. So now it either gets these these numbers. I guess I could take out the negative one now. Um, but so that way it sorts into that one, sorts on this one, or actually sorts 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 sorts, sorts, sorts alphabetically. So that now works. But to do that, I had to build that field. And then just and just 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 have it as the first like, row. So basically, so if you don't have anything sorted, 
If I clear the sort, then Tableau is going to sort automatically based on the first first execute column. So if I had that column in place and it sees these as strings, it's going to put them in that right order. So how did you change it again? How, how did I change? I didn't, I didn't change anything. I just I just added in. The only thing I did add was this uh, fixed calculation, just because I wanted to make sure that it was summing up the sales by by these pieces that we had. It looks like I don't even need the need this negative one anymore. Looks like it'll work out fine. Because you left a um, yeah, so, yeah. There you go. So so when we're talking about fixed um, things, these are called LOD expressions, level of detail expressions. So Chris. Um, I don't know if we want to explain um, what that's doing. I do have a feeling that's probably what Eric needs with his solution. So hopefully we'll we'll hear from from Eric with some more details. I can reach out to him um, as well and make sure what his question was there too. So you just changed the sort function, right? The, yeah, the I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even have a a really a sort function. I, I really take to, to, I really take take off the the sort off of all of these fields, and I just let 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 let, let, let the first one do it for me. So this one is going to sort in, in 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 so when you have any field on here, it's going to automatically sort by sort sort by the alphabetical order. So all I did was just change sales into profit into numbers, so that way it sorted in actually order. So what if you want to change by product subcategory? Can you do that? You mean like that, like alphabetical? Yeah. No, like you have two columns. The first one is source sales profit. profit. That, but that one I would just hide. I'm, I'm, I'm just showing you that one. So now it's sorted by that. So that's, that's, that, that, that's alphabetical. What if you have two columns? Well, um, then, you, then you'd have to combine them. Into if you want. So my issue is I have three columns, and then each time um, yeah. the, the person might be it, it, might wanting to um, sort one of them. I don't know which one they pick. Right. So, so yeah. So, but, 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 but is it so? So, so but, but is it sorting based on the? Um, is is it sorting based on words or is it sorting based based on numbers? Um, all numbers. Okay. Well, then it was all numbers. That was what we had 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 kind of in, in the in the beginning. We can take out this last part. Let's just make this be. Um, then we could take out here. Let me just duplicate this so I can keep it rename. Uh, can Can I show you just real quick? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. As long as you're fine sharing this data because um, it is recorded and will be shared. Yeah, it's fine. It's just. Um, this false disabled participants ratio. Um, seems like we cannot share. Oh, yeah. sharing turned off. I do not. Let me. That is the whole point of this being in a Zoom meeting, not a webinar. Let me see what I can do about that. This is. I think I went too far with making it too hard with the- uh, Here we go. I can make you a co-host, Ellie, and that should allow you to do that now. Alicia? No, I think she's still there. Ellie in the participant panel and I've made you a co-host Ellie I'm not sure if you are able to share now oh we lost her hopefully she'll come on back um okay next question Chris let me um let me pull up one uh we we have either the uh, question around power bi and tableau or a question on besides using an extract what are other methods of improving the efficiency of a workbook um not sure which you would like to tackle first. Why don't you, you go ahead and cover 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 like the Power BI thing? I know you had a lot yeah. of stuff. 
Yeah, so, um, and I think Chris, you can certainly um, chime in on that as well. So Nat had, had reached out to us in advance um, as well um, and had asked the question, do, do most companies use Tableau over Power BI? Um, and it's a great question. Um, you know, both companies um, uh, are, are, have powerful tools. Um, one of the, uh, we, we have looked at both and we, we prefer Tableau um, over it. And one of the key reasons is we are, uh, uh, you can see our Tableau templates. We're very much creators here as well. Um, and we have many of our, our team that work from Macs. Um, and so Power BI is only available for Windows machines. So that's one point that not, you know, it's, uh, that, that wouldn't uh, be accessible for, for a lot of our customers that work across both Windows and, um, and Mac. Um, other reasons around Power BI are some of the um, versus Tableau, um, some of the limitations that we see have to do around the number of data sources that you can connect to and the number of points um, that are in a dashboard. So um, there's a maximum in Power BI of 3,500 data points, um, uh, 10,000 for scatter plots. And we just tend to see uh, clients with big data a lot of the times that we're working with. Um, and that is not necessarily um, conducive to what they need to do, and you're limited to 10 data sources to be able to connect to live and things. Um, both tools, again, are visualization tools. We prefer um, uh, Tableau as well because Tableau, um, this is what Tableau does. Tableau does data visualization. Um, this is their whole specialty and what they've done. And it's it's really, um, you know, Salesforce has bought Tableau in the years past. And Salesforce tried to get into the industry to be a competitor of Tableau at one point. I remember, Chris, back in the day um, when that was happening. Um, and uh, tab uh, Salesforce decided it was a better idea to just buy Tableau because they were always outpacing what they could do um, in Salesforce with their visualizations and things too. Um, I'm going to show this really quick. Yeah. Um, so this is exactly that point. So this is this is this is off, off the whole Microsoft site, and these are the these are the problems right here. So if you're so if you're limiting your mark, so so Power, Power, Power BI doesn't doesn't come out and scream this, but what they do is it is they, they, they kind of kind of like you sample the data. So it's not you don't get the full data. You get a, get a you get a kind of representative sample of it. Kind of like how you know you have, have like a Google Analytics. Google Analytics technically doesn't give you exact numbers until days and days later. If you're looking at current traffic, it's going to sample the data to, to actually make it fast. So they so they they they, they kind of do do the exact same thing. So so the reason why that Power BI is faster than Tableau is because they don't give you give you all all the data. That's 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 one one kind of kind of big one. And I'll just show you an example. I'll show you a different screen work really quick, like where, where, where this may actually come into to a play, um, like, um, like, like for example, I got this, uh, this, 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 this actually the data set here on, 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 like all, all the uh, Shakespeare uh, books. Um, so if I look at all the different words that that were that were used by actually book, right here's all the words. So I've got thirty to thirty two thousand. 786. So if you just did this in Power BI, we would not, would not, would not, would not give you all those. So we just give you some actually sub set of that list. You know, if I wanted to do, um, let's do word count, and then we'll do this. So you couldn't do this there at all. You couldn't get this full actually list. Um, I'll try to make it look kind of cool. So so obviously the has been used 25,000. 568 times, right? So, um, so I'm not sure if this is an exact thing that you would want to you you would need, but it's just kind of cool to have. Always like this stuff, like watching the thing kind of go, <laughs> you know. Anyway, so that's can a, you make that noise again? Yeah. <laughs> so. That's great. Um, but Tom, I know you're you're on the call and and you use both tools. Um, do you have thoughts as well that you'd like to share? Um, if we still have Tom, oh, actually, I think yep, Tom, you are still here. Yeah. So when I started with this company, they were using Power BI because of the cost. Um, they had very few users to use it until I got on, um, and I was making it crash all the time just because the amount of data that they have, they just couldn't handle it. And then I just I pulled down Tableau and you know showed my manager the differences between the two and. It was an easy switch. 
Yeah. Oh, that's great to hear. I know that was, you know, Tom didn't know I was going to ask him that question. So I just wasn't sure where you'd land on that, Tom, too. So it's great to to hear. I think I think um, pricing is another reason a lot of people who are using Windows will, will go to Power BI. Um, and, and that is nice that it does have a, a freer version and things that you can use. Tableau it does have Tableau Public that is the free version, too. Um, but what we've found as well with some of the Power BI folks um, that we've worked with um, in the past that have been shifting just like you have to, to Tableau as well, um, is that that pricing, is there's some hidden pricing around the data as the data gets bigger too. Um, and Chris, I know you and I were talking about that earlier today. Do you want to talk a little bit about yeah. how you'll pay on in, in the back end from Azure and things like that? Yeah. So, so the, yeah, so that's the difference is, 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 is a one you can, so, so one with Tableau, you can kind of connect any sort of, sort of data source you want versus Power BI, they want you to connect, connect, connect to, to their, to, 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 like, they're, they're like stacked. And so the problem is, is that with Azure, you get charged data fees. So even though the front end product seems cheap, but you don't have any back end data fees with, 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 with like having Tableau, if you have the database and it's your database, there's, there's no back and forth. Now, if you're using to Tableau, to Tableau, to Tableau, to Tableau on, on Azure, then that's probably 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 the worst of of of, 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 of kind of both both of your worlds because you're going to be charged twice. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the thing. If you look at the to, to, total 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 cost of ownership of the uh, two, I think I think that the tablet is actually cheaper. All right, that was a great question, Nat. Thank you for that. Um, and then I know we're getting close to time, Chris. I think this might be a question that we carry over to the next. Uh, Tableau live session, um, but one to just uh, we could we could start to touch on just a little bit if we'd like, and then I think we can go into a deeper dive with it. Um, but the last question um, uh, that I wanted to cover today um, was: besides using an extract, what are other methods of improving the efficiency of a workbook? Um, I think we could probably do a whole webinar on that um, as well. But just top of thoughts um, yep. things in there, and I'll put this question in the chat too. The, the 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 two main things is so um so one if you if you cannot use an extract it's actually better um because it'll it'll definitely help you something tableau has built in now if i go to this in, in, in any any sort of dashboard i go to server publish uh i thought it was here hold on a second i might be in the wrong version servo here you heard this run run this optimizer so this is going to give you some things you can look at so I got multiple data sources having having unused fields. That could be one. I could review dashboard size is not fixed on one. So that's another thing as a live live connection. So this is a, a good place to start by by checking what what like Tableau itself says you should uh, should do. Um, I have found the the biggest gotcha is actually having a bunch of these these actually filters on your dashboard. So if you find your dashboard has a bunch of these guys, then that, that that's going to be like just just like uh, just like just like 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 way way slow. So what we try to do, we try to use use actions versus filters. So I can still get the same same functionality I can from that from that from that from that that I drop down. Let's pull your we'll we'll pull your cross tab into here. Um, I think I already got it here actually. Uh, that's gonna help us any. Uh, we'll pull this one. Out. So if I were to look at this and I would make this a, a like filter, I can now click on this and it's going to actually filter. So it's going to do the same thing that you would from that from that that like drop down, but it just makes it way way faster to, to do. So those are really the the two main ones. Uh, other things that help a little bit is having things that are floating. So if you build all your dashboards as tiled, then that that that, that like takes takes slightly more time. Um, and then other than that, the best place else to look is this like a um, is is this like a performance recording? So you can you can set a performance recording and start clicking through your dashboard, you know, do a bunch of different things, whatever it says. And then once you end it, um, so performance, stop performance recording, then that's gonna build a separate little like a workbook for me, maybe supposed to. Yeah. And Chris, where was that run optimizer um, again um, when, yeah. when you it's good as that? Um, 
Yeah, just get a server. Under server. Great. Yeah, yeah that's not one I use very often. I, I have done the performance recordings before, so that's a great trick. I mean, All right, well, let me just wrap things up here um, with, oh, there's the report. That's awesome, Chris. Let me go ahead and I'll share my screen here um, with the wrap up. Hang on one second. And we'll just kind of talk about ways that we can continue to support you all um, going forward too. So um, if you have more questions, submit them to us. You can use the boulderinsight.com questions form um, and we'll be sure to answer them next month. The other way to ask those questions is when you register next month, put your question in as well. So that will happen as, um, for you too. If you have an urgent question, you can actually go to the big website and there's a little blue pill at the bottom corner and that will get you time on Chris's Calendly and we can help you with urgent questions that come up. Um, keep in mind that each time you submit a question, you also are eligible to win a 30 minute one on one coaching session with us. So um, that's something we do each month and uh, can announce winners that way. And there will be recordings of today's sessions emailed to all the registrants. So know that. And our next session, next month's Tableau Live session is going to be September 13th, same time, same place. So thanks everybody for attending. We hope that you will join us again. And please don't hesitate to reach out if we can be of any support to you. Um, one email that we did give today for um, from our business development director is Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, at boulderinsight.com. If you have questions about uh, having a conversation, setting up a, a time to talk about how we can support your company, please reach out to Stuart. Feel free to do that. Or info at boulderinsight.com. We'll always get you to our team too. So, um, and you can also get to our contact um, through our website. So we wish you all the best. Have a wonderful rest of August and we'll see you when we're back to school in September with us. Take care, everybody. Thank you.